Alright guys, so nothing's really, there's nothing crazy going on today, but let me just show you something. Let me just show you something. For, so it's 11.51 December 8 now, and this week, like I said, last time I had recorded something, it is extremely busy because I have classes every single day, and I have at least two every single day, sometimes three or four, and it is just, I'm just, get, I'm just getting extremely tired, and uh, you know, I just, I, every, any, any chance I just try to take a nap, you know, just pass it on my desk, whatever go to the teacher's lounge or whatever and always before I work out I'm just taking naps and once I get home I'm just pretty dead so I have not been recording stuff and actually nothing been nothing crazy yet um, recently I've been getting home pretty late because uh, more and more of the baseball kids um, they're in so you know in America if you're in the gym and you see people with some crappy form you you typically typically you know the etiquette is to just don't don't say like don't go up to some people and tell them like their form sucks and whatever because uh, a lot of people just don't want to hear it you know but apparently in Japan people like that kind of thing and the baseball coach was telling me he's like hey if you see that they don't have a good form you know go correct them like go help them out they'll love it like they'll love it and so recently I've been helping some kids out with their form on the bench press deadlifts and whatever and the kids actually like they love it like they're smiling they're laughing they seem so happy but then I get home extremely late because it takes it does take time to explain it well, especially because I don't want to just speak pure Japanese. I try to give it to them in English so it's a little bit more fun, you know. And then I'll only use Japanese as a last resort. But anyways, I just want to show you guys what I got in the package today. That's really why I started this recording. This is so freaking random, but let me just show you how Asian how Asian I am. Ready? Here we go. I need to get my scissors so I can open this thing, man. Here we go. We all love opening packages together, so here, see what we got. Ugh, I didn't. Re I really didn't want to have. I didn't want to buy this, but I was kind of put in a position, or I did something that was very silly that uh, made me have to buy this. So let me <laughs> get it open here. All right. Oh uh, yeah. Ugh. Alright, so, this is actually huge, what the heck, what is all this? Uh, check it out guys, check it out, what the hell is this thing? Oh my god, it is not a normal frying pan, this is a legit, a wok. <laughs> it's a freaking wok and it smells funny as hell. But anyways, why did I get this guys? Well, you see... What is up with this? Is this supposed to be like something you put in here for the handle or is it like handles just this? It seems dangerous. It seems like it get really hot and you just burn yourself. This is really heavy. Holy crap, man. Yeah, anyways. So I got a wok because I had a frying pan right and pretty much you can use it for the same thing. I'm pretty sure this doesn't really not a really big deal. But uh so I had this frying pan and I bought some uh dumplings, okay? I bought some dumplings. And they come on this like plastic tray, right? Uh, like it's like a styrofoam plastic tray kind of thing. And the instructions on the dumplings say, put the dumplings with the plastic tray in your pan, put some water in it, and then heat it up, put it up, the heat on high, and then once the water uh, starts going away, put the heat on low, and then the dumplings will be done. So I did that, right? And uh, <laughs> I freaking forgot that I, I had it sitting on there, and when I went back, all the water was gone and the plastic styrofoam stuff had just completely melted and it was stuck to the dumplings and that part was stuck to my pan and then I was I didn't know what to do so I tried to wash it and then the plastic just turned solid and it got stuck on the pan and it wouldn't come off so long story short I had to throw away the pan so I didn't have a pan and, and when I was getting another one I was like man you know what why not just be super freaking Chinese and get a freaking wok <laughs> cause you know with a wok you can make like soupy things as well you know cause look how deep this thing is this is like not this is this is like so um it's not like very heavy or anything it's like thin super it feels like it get hot really fast yeah anyways so this is what I got, guys. Alright, guys, what is going on? It is... What is today? December... I think it's December 9th today. Let's see here. Yes, December 9th. 
and it is five, about like 520 already. And just starting my workout now because uh, after school today I had to help a kid with his speech contest. There's a middle school kid. It's pretty interesting because middle school kids can't express themselves as well as uh, high school students uh, in English. So he was like, pretty much just speaking to me in Japanese and I was trying to answer his questions and stuff. But very, very cute kid. Also happens to be the worst at English, but very cute kid and he's trying so, you know, can't knock the hustle. But anyways, today is a squat workout, a leg workout, and uh, today I only have to do one set of squats, four to six reps of 112.5 kilos. I remember last time I was having problem uh, hitting consistent depth, I felt, and so now my cue for today is really opening up the groinal area, as raunchy as that sounds, but so far doing that allows me to hit depth very easily. Let's see if I can keep that up for the heavier weights, but uh, right now I'm on the... I think my fourth warm-up set, 80 kilos total, and we're just gonna I'm just gonna record these to see how my depth is looking throughout. So here we go. Alright guys, so as I said, this uh the cue of opening up your groinal area when doing the squat is really helping me hit depth because when you just focus if, if you push if you think about pushing your knees forward then when you get towards the bottom you just at this strange point where you're like I'm parallel but it's getting really hard to break parallel I think I'm about to interrupt myself real quick so hang on a sec all right so I just did that set you guys saw and even though on the cam like the camera angle was not very good for depth like those those reps I know I hit depth see like if I hit reps like that where I have the feeling and I know I'm smacking smacking the depth you know then I don't really, I'm not as paranoid about it, but last time when I was doing it, I wasn't even sure, it didn't feel like it. And then when I looked at the camera, I wasn't sure. This time, it definitely felt like it. And I was looking in the mirror ahead of me to make sure, so that helps too. But now, I, okay, this is, this help, is helping a lot actually. The, the cue, the mental cue of open your, you know, open your legs from the groinals right here, that, like that, that, really helps me get low and hit the depth. Get low! So, all right, moving on to the next warm set. Here we go. Now, I'm not saying this is true for everybody. Some people can push their leg, their knees forward and that actually helps them uh, get as low as they want to. I know when a very popular YouTuber, Matt Ogis, thinks about pushing his knees forward and it works for him, but it doesn't work for me. And, I, and I've, so I've heard that it doesn't work for a lot of people. But anyways, if you're having trouble, you should think. Tr why don't you guys try out, you know, opening it, opening up the groinal area, and that'll probably help you uh, hit that depth that you know we're all striving for. We want to get it deep in there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyways, yeah, you guys should try it out. If you're having problems, you know, not saying pro not promising it's gonna do anything, but I personally noticed that it helped me a lot. All right, guys, <clears throat> here it is. Moment of truth. We got 15, 30, 45, 46.5 on each side. Multiply that by two, that's 92.5 on each side, plus 20 of the bar, which is 112.5. This is approximately, I think, 248. Yeah, 248 pounds, and I'm going for four to six reps. And I'm gonna go for eight. I mean, whoa, what the heck, go for six? But my legs are already freaking, they're already failing from the warm up sets. What the heck? So as you guys heard, I was I'm not I was not kidding. My groinal area, my legs were already sore just from the warm-ups, and I'm pretty sure that was a signal that I need to take a deload week. You know, I've been doing this routine for about two months straight now without taking any deload, and I had originally I forgot about this, but I had originally said that I was gonna run this kind of split for two months and kind of see how it is, and it's going well, but it is a little tough on the body because it's just so long and you're doing so much volume. I mean, I, I enjoy it, but I'm not like I'm not gonna lie and say that it's easy on the body. As you can see, that I think that was a third rep, and I'm already feeling it. like this weight felt it felt pretty heavy. I'm I don't know, like it just felt heavy. I don't know why, guys. It just felt extremely heavy. Let's let's see. Oh my goodness, dude! Holy guacamole! I think we're on the sixth rep. I'm taking a huge <laughs> break in between trying to catch my breath. Look at this, look at that. I'm about to poop my pants. Holy crap, I'm about to poop my pants. <laughs> but I got it out. That's pretty good. Alright guys, so as you saw, I was able to get six reps. I was pretty good. That was pretty good. It was, it was also a pretty big grinder as well. The last one, I almost crushed myself. But that's it's actually kind of good because 
after the second or third rep, I was like, holy crap, this is actually pretty freaking heavy. Um, I'm not sure, uh, like my quads are really feeling, like, I already feel like I'm gonna cramp on like the outer quad area. But it's, it's good though because um, I, I, I needed to, it's cool to know that you can like push through, you know, because I could have easily just hit four and been like, all right, this shit is way too heavy, I'm just gonna stop now. But I wanna test myself, you know, push my uh, mental fortitude, you know, just be like, all right, Thomas, you got this, you're too freaking good for this weight and just push through it, so that's, that's pretty cool. So while I did feel extremely tired and the weight did feel extremely heavy, it was really, it was kind of cool because now that I'm in this bulk, you know, I'm taking in more calories. It's not just, I don't think, I feel like it's not just the physical part that, um, that you gain energy. Like you're not just physically stronger and physically able to do more. Because, you know, when you're dieting, and towards, especially towards the end, you're so depleted and you just feel completely gone. But you also feel completely gone mentally. You don't feel like you have the extra gear to push. You just kind of feel, like, dead. You're just like, holy crap, I'm going to take what I can get. But with these extra calories, and calories, I really felt like I have that extra, you know, gear. That, that nas <laughs> in my mind where it's like, holy crap, this is super heavy, but let's push it. Let's go. And uh, really, you know, I was, I was able to push through, which is... I don't think I would have been able to do it at the end of my diet. Well, I'm sure I wasn't able to do it at, towards the end of my cut because, you know, when I tried to do the squats at Brian's gym, I damn near killed myself. But anyways, things are going pretty well. And this week I am on a deload weekend. You know, you'll see about that. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.